Hello everyone, welcome back. N3FJZ with more ZX front panel work. I've added some additional uh, functionality and I've released a code and I've put it up on my website. The links are below in the uh, description or you can simply search for circuit 6040 and it should bring you some results on my website and what you're looking for is ZX front panel or ZX SSB2 front panel. Anyway, uh, I've added uh, parameter setting screens to the color display now. So at this moment, uh, the ZX front panel is usable in a um, homebrew project that has diode ring mixers that require a VFO and a BFO and it can and if your rig contains a crystal filter well that is a parameter that you um, you can enter from the front panel so let me go through those new screens and I'm pressing uh, the function button from the uh, from the main screen we have a brightness setting screen now where you can set the brightness for both the uh, color display and for the monochrome. You press function again, you'll get a contrast setting display, but this one only affects the monochrome display. You press it again, and you are uh, presented with a multi-item configuration setting screen. And uh, this is where uh, you would set your IF frequency or your uh, crystal filter center frequency right from the UI. Now I know there was a number of projects I did in early uh, construction I did for um, my first homebrew rig where you had to go into the, the sketch and you had to enter various parameters and recompile it uh, here. What I've done is I've set it up to where you enter all these settings right from the UI. So technically, uh, once you've uh, downloaded the uh, sketch and in, in installed it in your Arduino Mega, there should be no reason you would need to go back into the source code to change anything, even if you were to change crystal filters. And I also have, as you can see at the bottom, three items you can uh, change the uh, drive level of the three clocks on the SI5351. And right now, the way I have it we're, uh, wired, and you can see this in the schematic that I have on my website, is that uh, clock zero is the VFO and clock two is the BFO. Now, the center uh, channel on the SI5351 or clock one, I'm going to use that as sort of a calibration output. And um, the way I'll set it up is that I'll, uh, maybe at first I'll just have a um, 10 megahertz signal being generated by that center frequency and then you would connect it to a frequency counter. And then you would change your uh, oscillator trim to bring it in line with 10 megahertz, that way you set your um, your SI5351's trim to bring it right on frequency. And then if you hold down the home key or the home button for uh, three seconds, it will save all these settings, including the brightness, the contrast, and of course the last frequency you have set on the dial into non-volatile RAM. So that way the next time you power it up, it comes back on these settings. So that was one of the things I had was a was a pain in the early days when I would change a crystal filter. I had to go and re re, re um, compile the uh, Arduino sketch, load it into the Arduino, and and go from there. And if I changed the filter again, or I needed to change the drive levels, I had to go in and and do some setting of the uh, or changing of parameters inside the source code, or even the level and the crystal trim. And try to get it calibrated. So this is all done from the UI. And the way this works is that um, on this screen, if you press the function, well, first off, 
you have your left and right arrow keys that will take you to the digit you want to change. And you just turn the encoder and you dial in the frequency that you want for your crystal filter. And here's the, here's the really great part of this, is that this happens in real time as you're listening. You know, you don't have to change it, save it, and then reboot the Arduino. It, it will change the SI5351 real time as you're dialing in this frequency. Same thing goes with the uh, oscillator trim. As you turn this dial, the frequency that is generating uh, will change based on your parts per million, I think it is, offset of your crystal oscillator. So you actually trim up the crystal that's on the SI5351 board. And then of course you save it to your non-volatile uh, EE prom in the SI50 uh, in the uh, Arduino and the next time you power it up it remembers that setting so there's no uh, need to uh, enter it again and same thing holds true with your uh, with your levels and um, right now I don't have my antenna attached to the house uh, I took it down last night for th some thunderstorms where I could give you some on-air uh, examples of what it, uh, what it sounds like as you change some of these, but I do have um, my oscilloscope connected to the um, to the output, and uh, here on the top is clock zero, and the bottom trace is uh, clock one. So I want to change uh, clock zero, which is the VFO. I'm right now I'll have it set for four. And there's a setting in the SI5351. It's like four milliamps. 2 milliamps, and if you go to zero, it just turns that channel off completely. Here's two, here's four, here's six, here's eight. And I haven't gone so far as to measure what the DBM uh, output of this is, but um, here is, uh, let's see, let's go to the um, the BIA, uh, the BFO, which is clock two, which is on the bottom trace. And here you can see I'm increasing it to eight, four, or eight, six, four, two, and zero shuts it off. Now here's an interesting experiment. Let me get back to the, uh, the um, top, uh, the clock zero. And uh, let's see now. Okay. Let's see if I can make this more obvious. Okay, I want to switch to uh, low side injection. And slow down the scope a little bit here. And I'm going to, uh, we all talked about, uh, or there's always been a lot of talk about the um, crosstalk on the SI5351, and that's why you use clock zero and two. But here I have the uh, clock one, which is the center set of contacts on the board. And right now I have that program for 10 megahertz, and, and now I have it set to zero output. But as you see, as I dial in, there's two milliamps. There's four, there's six, there's eight. You can see that there's kind of a hash that ends up on that channel, on the uh, channel zero. Bringing it back down to six, four, two, and now the center channel is off. Okay. And we'll go ahead and bring on the uh, BFO, which is a uh, clock two. If I set the scope to trigger on channel two, there's the uh, the BFO, and I have this coming out of an SI5351 on these two coax cables. They come up to two um, 50 ohm attenuators I have going into the scope, so. Yeah, it's kind of like a my best attempt at creating a 50 ohm load on the scope side. 
We'll see what this one does. The, the channel two, when I bring up the 10 megahertz center channel or channel one, yeah, you get the same hash there. So you can see that there is some amount of crosstalk. Now I don't have that center channel I do not have a load on it, so maybe that has some contributing factors. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. And we'll just go ahead and turn that off. But this would be good if, as you're doing some home brewing work, if you want to experiment with uh, does the drive level affect the way the signal sounds and so forth. You can actually in real time dial in the uh, level of output from the SI5351. And here I am changing it on the screen. Okay, now once you've set all your uh, your parameters the way you want them, if you hold the home key down for three seconds, it'll tell you what it's saving to EEPROM or non-volatile RAM, and it will tell you that starter parameter saved to non-volatile memory. So it lets you know that it did that. So that's what I have so far. And uh, also another thing, I don't know if I mentioned this in my last video, I think I did, but I've added, I've extended the um, front panel to be able to dial in uh, higher frequencies. I just arbitrarily selected 460 megahertz. And I'm just, it, it can't generate that high frequency accurately. But what I did was I did verify that it um, will uh, go down to 225, I think it was. And again, this all happens in real time. And uh, as you can see, the uh, VFO is supposed to be outputting a frequency of 215. And if I go back on my scope, channel one, let's see, 215.998. And this scope's frequency counter isn't all that accurate, but you can see this 215.999 megahertz. So this one, at least the particular SI5351 that I have, which is an Adafruit module, is in fact generating that uh, frequency. Okay. So I think that's uh, the newest features I've added. I don't think I missed anything. And I'll put the code up on the, uh, on the website You can give it a try and uh, let me know in the uh, comments how it went for you. Schematic is there too. And as I said before, my goal was to create kind of like a universal homebrewers front panel for, I guess you, the best way I can describe it, since it's the only experience I have, is um, what I call BIDX like rigs. I'm sure it would work with other rigs, but when I say BIDX like, it's essentially um, a uh, a diode ring mixer for the VF uh, for the um, first mixer, where the you would set the send the VFO, and then of course the uh, product detector, which is another version of a diode ring mixer, and a crystal filter in between the two of them, and that's. Uh, and again, the schematics are up on my website. I guess with some creative programming, we could make it uh, triple conversion. I don't know. And uh, here uh, also is um, you dial in the frequency you want. from the encoder, dial it in, um, 
and as you could see the VFO and BFO frequencies there in blue and yellow uh, as you change your injection from low which is the VFO is below the desired receive or transmit frequency to high injection which is now the VFO is above and of course it's either the sum or the difference of those two uh, that gives you the uh, 9 megahertz crystal filter center frequency. This is all taken care of in real time on the fly inside the Arduino. Again other projects I did early on you'd have to you know, change one or two of the settings and recompile your code. Again this is all done from the front panel. Uh, I think I talked about the um, the mode select right now all that does is just change that indicator I don't have any real hardware on my RF deck that would change the different modes, but it would be as a simple matter of putting additional code in those areas that that are dropped into when it changes the display. There's other you could add more code to that, which would either manipulate pins on the Arduino output to do something on your deck, or even you could even manipulate these frequencies in some way. But there's actually no real code behind that. And of course, you could have USB, LSB, and again, all the calculations are taken care of. The um, sideband inversion is calculated as it happens. We got the uh, real-time clock that's linked to a GPS module. That's the time you see there. That's real-time. So I'm very happy on what I've achieved here on this. I finally got to the point where it's usable as it is. Now there's a lot more features. Uh, many more features I want to add and you can see if you look in the source code in the sketch I have a little section here with like future features and things that my daily goals and things of that nature well anyway I hope you enjoyed uh, the video I hope that you um, download the code and build a copy of this and attach it to your Bidex like rig and uh, with an SI5351 and uh, see if it frees you up which I hope it will for me because uh, the reason I started doing a lot of the RF hardware is to kind of get away from programming because I have a tendency to get further down in the rabbit hole and before you know it I'm spending all my time writing code which uh, really uh, I need to I need to finish this up at least to the point where I can build a rig and I want to take it out uh, out in the backyard in field day and again that was the whole reason I, I still I included the uh, kept the um, the monochrome display so that the uh, if it's in direct sunlight I could read it and I've I think I've achieved it anyway 73 everyone this is n3 FJZ